What up, Internet? I am the PC Goblin. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Shadow Rock 3 by Be Quiet. Now, this is a 190 watt TDP CPU cooler. And this is the box that it comes in. So let's go ahead and start unboxing it and see what we get with it. Okay, so to start, we've just got like a little pull tab or whatever this is called on the back. Pull up on the top. And this is what we're greeted with, just one flap. It's kind of weird and unique. And this is the other flap, but it looks like it's designed to hold something in it. Foam protecting the cooler. Box of accessories, I'm assuming the mounting hardware. And, and finally, the cooler itself. This is really quite large, but it's actually really light. I mean, it's not, it's definitely got some weight to it, but with how big it is, I'd expect this to be a lot heavier, if I'm going to be honest about things. So, that's cool. Put that off to a side. Anything else in our box? Oh, yeah. We got to have a fan. One Shadow Wings 2 fan. So this will be good. Be nice and quiet. <laughs> yeah, that's all that's in that box. Let's see what's in this box. Awesome! One, be quiet screwdriver. That's so cool. So, that's it for that box. We have instructions. Uh, info about how to dispose of it. And then finally, the mounting hardware. So we got Intel, AMD, all sorts of brackets to attach fans to it. So for socket compatibility with the stuff that we have right here, we can do Intel 1150, 1151, 1155, 2011-3, Square ILM 2066, AMD AM3 Plus, and AM4. So if you're using Ryzen 3, this will do it. And according to this, at 100% RPM, the lattice this will be is 24.4 decibels. So that's a whole lot quieter than just ambient noise. You are not going to hear this thing when it's spinning at full speed trying to keep your processor cool. So we're actually going to play with that. So now we're going to do a couple of different tests. We're going to stick this on my Ryzen wet bench so we can see what kind of temperatures this gets versus the custom loop that's sitting on top of it right now. So I'll bring it over, we'll do a couple tests, put this on, do a couple tests with it. And then we're going to stick this on my i7-9800X on my X299 platform because it gets really, really hot. And see just how well this does versus the AIO that's currently strapped to it. <laughs> All right, so here we are. We've got my wet bench right here. We've got the custom loop cooler sitting on top of the Ryzen 3700X. I believe I've got it all pretty much default settings, but either way, those settings aren't gonna change between the custom loop and the Be Quiet cooler. We're gonna run real bench for about 30 minutes, stressing out the CPU as much as we can, see what kind of temperatures we get by doing that, let everything saturate, so it should be a fairly even test at that point, or at least at the end of it. And then we're going to take off the custom loop and we're going to put on the Shadow Rock 3 and see where things are at with that. And then after that, we're going to throw the Shadow Rock 3 onto my 9800X and see what we get on top of that chipset. So let's go ahead and get started. For the testing that we're going to do, we're going to do just H.264 video encoding because that's only going to use the CPU. I would use image editing or OpenCL or heavy multitasking, but that's not going to push the CPU as hard as the H.264 video encoding is. And if we've got it running at about 4 gigahertz at the moment when it's idling, and it's sitting at about 32 degrees when it's doing nothing, just hopped up really quick, but whatever. 
But we're gonna go ahead and start this. We'll come back in about 30 minutes at about 226, 227 and see what kind of temperatures we're getting. So right off the bat, it jumps up to about 65 and we'll see what happens as it builds up and you know the loop gets saturated with heat and whatnot. We didn't get exactly 30 minutes, got about 25 minutes and we saw it hit about a maximum of 68 degrees. So it's time to throw on the Be Quiet cooler and see what that does. <laughs> So I've just got it installed right here. You can see it spinning fully. You can feel air going through it. And the fan profile is set to the standard tuning for the fan, so it should ramp up and slow down accordingly as we're going through. So we're gonna run through that for 30 minutes, and then we're gonna see what kind of temperatures we get with that. So before we start, it's kind of hard to see exactly where it's going to sit, but it looks like we're getting down to about 36, 35 degrees and spikes up to 43 the second it does anything. So let's go ahead and start the test and see what we get under max load. Instantly jumps up to 64 degrees, 65 degrees, so exactly like my water cooler. So it's been about 30 minutes and we're seeing 70 degrees on the CPU, so a few degrees hotter than the custom loop but it's still really good and it's still really quiet. I now have my 9800X rig hooked up. Got it booted up. Now that we're on my 9800X system, we're gonna go ahead and start the test. It's gonna be the same thing we did on the wet bench with the Ryzen chip. So we're gonna be doing the same kind of test. We're gonna be comparing my AIO, which isn't quite as good as a custom loop, but it's still pretty good. And we're gonna compare it against the Shadow Rock 3 just to see what kind of differences we get with that. But this time we're using a much hotter chip, which is the 9800X. I've got it all set to factory settings, but it is still a really hot chip. It uses tons of power, so. I'm going to go ahead and start the test, come back to this after about 30 minutes and see what kind of temps that we're sitting at. So already off the bat, we're jumping up to 68, 67 degrees, 69, but it hasn't been that long, so we'll give it 30 minutes, be right back, see what it does. It's now been going for way longer than 30 minutes and we're idling at about 68 degrees, 69 degrees. Whatever. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Be Quiet cooler does. So I'll get that switched out and be right back. So I've got the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 sitting right there. Now we're going to do more tests on my 9800X to see just what it's going to do and compare it against everything else. So I have the fan on the cooler set to 100%. So it's going full bore and we're sitting at about 44 degrees idle. So we're going to go ahead and start the test and see what happens in 30 minutes. Already we're jumping up to 67 degrees, so it's going to be exciting to see what this thing does. So looking at the temperature, we're sitting at 79, 80 degrees. I've been kind of watching it as it's been bouncing back and forth and doing its thing. So I mean it's keeping it at the target of 80 degrees, so that's good. It's not throttling the CPU at all. It's 4.1 gigahertz, but it's way quieter than the AIO doing the same workload, so that's pretty good. Now that we've finished all the tests, now we can actually draw some kind of conclusion about how good this cooler is compared to other kinds of coolers. So, in all scenarios, this thing was actually really quiet. It was quieter than both coolers that it was competing against. On my wet bench with the 3700X, the custom loop saw about a max of 68 degrees, while the Shadow Rock 3 got about a max of 70 degrees. Now the Shadow Rock 3's fan was running underneath the normal profile that the BIOS had set up for the CPU fan, which to me it seemed like it actually pushed it to 100% because I went in after that test just to check it out, set the fan to just full speed all the time, ran the same test. It didn't get any hotter, but it didn't get any cooler as well. But I have to say this about my custom loop it has two fans strapped to the radiator so it has more fans pushing more hot air off of the radiator you know fins whatever you want to consider it as whereas this only had one however you do have the option to strap a fan to the front and the back so you can do a push pull configuration I imagine if we did that we would have seen at least a two degree drop in the temperature so it should have been more or less just about as good as the 
um, custom loop was would be my guess. Now I'm not going to test that or at least in this video because I'm just trying to show off this cooler at, with everything that it comes with and it doesn't come with two fans it only comes with one so that's why the tests are being run the way they are. Moving on to my personal rig that I use every day with the Fantex Evolve X case running the i7-9800X. The NZXT Kraken, X62 Kraken, saw a max of 68 degrees while the Shadow Rock 3 underneath the fan running at 100% full speed saw a max of 80 degrees. So just like on the wet bench, my Kraken has two fans that's pushing air off and away from the loop or off the cooler, however you want to consider that one as well. So I imagine we would have gotten better temperatures had we put another fan on the front of this. But the biggest difference is the Kraken was insanely loud. You can hear it in the video earlier where we are actually testing it just whoa, really loud you can hear it in the microphone whereas this one it was loud and it was definitely louder than it was when it was sitting on my wet bench it was nowhere near as loud as the crack and it was still fairly quiet but you could hear it so this cooler costs about 50 bucks I'll have a link to it in the description below if you want to go check it out for that 50 bucks it comes with one shadow wings two fan clips to strap two fans to this so you can strap the one it comes with and then if you have an extra or want to buy another one you can strap it to the front it's got five or ten heat pipes on it depending on how you want to look at it you know five total but with how it splits out you know it's ten and it's light it's got a high profile so it'll sit over pretty much all memory and you shouldn't really have any issues strapping it to any system that you're wanting to cool plus it's German engineering so as you know that is the best kind of engineering but the thing I don't like about it is I don't like how bulky this is when you're trying to strap it and the biggest thing is I don't like how you have to fish a screwdriver through it to be able to tighten it down onto the CPU on one side of it because if you lose this or don't have a screwdriver like this as long as this you're gonna have an issue taking it off your cooler or putting it on the cooler it's not a huge deal because I mean you can go buy a screwdriver like this from a hardware store but if you're not planning on doing that, that's an extra trip that you gotta do. So to me, that's about the only downside that I see with this. So hopefully that helps you and hopefully you found this video helpful and you liked it, so you'll hit that like button. And if you didn't, well, you know what to do. If you have any questions or comments about anything in this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I try to answer those as fast as possible, so generally within a day, depending on circumstances. And hopefully you like this video enough to where you wanna subscribe to my channel so you can see my upcoming videos by hitting that subscribe button down below. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.